it, it's about diving into what really is causing the unhealthy habits to begin with. And I always talk about how fitness and health and wellness begins with the F word. And that usually perks up a few ears. <laughs> and that F word is, is forgiveness. Wow. So often people are going through life with so many resentments and um, they're just, they're bitter. And there's so many things that have not been taken care of um, from an emotional standpoint that they are using food as medicine. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello friends and welcome. If you're struggling with health issues, low self-esteem, or stubborn pounds that you've tried endlessly to conquer, you're definitely going to enjoy our program today. Wendy Pett, a nationally recognized name in the fitness industry, is passionate about motivating and encouraging people to make fitness and nutrition part of their daily routine. She enthusiastically teaches the care of mind, body, and spirit, assisting others to learn the importance of reaching their full God-given potential through her visibly fit program. And Wendy, you are a dear friend, and I am so glad to have you on the program today. Welcome. Thank you. It is an honor and a privilege, and I just adore you, and uh, your show is great, and so thanks for having me. Uh, likewise. Well, listen, we've had these conversations many times, and I respect you tremendously, and that's why I'd love for your voice to be heard today. You know, one of the, the questions that I would have for you is, what would you say the, the most common underlying issue is with most of the clients that you work with? Because, you know, a lot of people struggle with a lot of these things. What would you say that most common underlying issue is? Yeah, that's a great question, Brenda. I really think that, um, you know, most people think, oh, I just have bad habits or, you know, I'm too busy and, or uh, it's just genetic or the, the kind of thoughts that go through people's minds, that that's, that's kind of the pitfall. But really what I would say is that people are not really addressing the real root issue to their problems. And it's usually different than what they think. It's not oh, I was just, um, I have a few bad habits. It's usually deeper than that. It's usually an emotional um, kind of issue mm -hmm. that needs to be pulled out at, at the roots and um, really, first of all, unraveled. And sometimes it can be something that's been a, a tra traumatic childhood experience that's um, wow. really just taken hold of the person and allowed those um, counterfeit comforts to set in over time and really, it, it's about diving into what really is causing the unhealthy habits to begin with. And I always talk about how fitness and health and wellness begins with the F word. And that usually perks up a few ears. <laughs> and that F word is, is forgiveness. Wow. So often people are going through life with so many resentments and um, they're just, they're bitter. And there's so many things that have not been taken care of um, from an emotional standpoint that they are using food as medicine, or maybe there's other substances abuse or over shopping or or just drowning their their unhealthy emotions that they aren't willing to um, address with social media or whatever that they need to numb out with but I think that's the bigger issue is that we have to get to why are you doing what you do why do you feel the way that you feel because we can't change your habits and get you on a, on a healthy trajectory until we figure out the root cause I so agree, and and I think what I've seen from most coaches, because really, I mean, you can go anywhere online and find health and nutrition coaches, but what I love about your approach is that you are taking it a step deeper and you're addressing those things. You mentioned trauma, which, you know, I can certainly relate to, and, uh, you know, throughout much of my life, and I've never been a real overeater, but I have used food, you know, at times to be a comfort. So I think sure. that, you know, we have to learn, would you say we have to learn what those triggers are and then begin to identify them? And, um, you know, what does that look like for someone who may not even recognize that about themselves? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, first of all, you have to acknowledge, right? What we don't acknowledge, then it never gets dealt with. So first of all, you have to be really raw and authentic with yourself and say, all right, enough is enough. Why am I really doing this self-sabotaging um, you know, a action to myself. What what is it accomplishing? Because really, it's just a momentary momentary um, uh, escape, but it never solves the problem. And so, really getting to just okay, what's going on, and giving yourself grace through the process. I think sometimes we can feel 
uh, just ashamed or, or that guilt and all the negative emotions on that end too, as we try to unravel what's really at the, um, the, the crux of, of why we do what we do. And so getting to that root cause is, is, is it's a journey. Uh -huh. Right. So for some yeah. people, they can uh, get a little bit hel help, you know, from a coach or maybe just a counselor and then they're OK. They're, they're on track. But for some people, it may take years, but it's, it's being bold and rising up to um, really understanding that God does not want you to stay in this place of despair, in this place of of, of really feeling um, just in a place of of. I, you bondage. know, that unforgiveness, that yeah. bondage, exactly, uh -huh. that unforgiveness place. Yeah. And starting to see yourself through the eyes of the Lord will change things. Mm. So, um, yeah, I really just help my clients unravel what maybe they don't even realize they're in. And so mm. just by asking questions, really. That's good. Not by telling them, but asking and, them questions. And probably learning new coping skills or not just even coping, exactly. but uh, I, I, what I hear you saying is you're talking about the difference between maybe um, <clears throat> rewarding oneself with a treat mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to loving oneself and rewarding themselves with good health and energy and uh, sustenance and long, long life. Um, you know, I think too, I've, I've really been uh, taken back by the, um, the lack of, uh, or some of the health issues that we see among even our youth and you know mm -hmm. with the introduction of fast food chains and you know a couple generations ago people started taking their children to mcdonald's and and all the different uh fast food chains that were targeted toward children and so a lot of the kids now have grown up on junk food and are developing major uh, food intolerances and food allergies so Type this is not diabetes. yes mm -hmm. this is not just mm -hmm. a um, an age group per se that is that is uh, anymore you know perhaps dealing with just hormone issues uh, or aging but really we're looking at an entire uh, generation of our young people who are now dealing with a lot of health issues how can you help rewire and uh, what kind of things do you have to address with younger people well first of all I would say that it's a it's a an issue with our society. Mm -hmm. We are an instant gratification society. And so um, when our children are overweight and they're developing um, different diseases, it is the the parents' fault, mm -hmm. I will say, because we are the ones that go and buy the groceries. They, they are not yeah. in control of that. And so um, it's important that we also understand that marketing is big. There's a lot of money um, put into marketing. And that's one of the reasons even they put, you know, high high sugar cereals on the, mm -hmm. on the aisle so that it's Addictive. eyeball to eyeball with the little children, mm -hmm. right? They, cause they're, they're colorful and they've got the little characters and they try to make it so fun and exciting. And then it's really just causing havoc, uh, on their health. And so really how do we unravel that? We have to see what's, what's behind all the marketing. We have to see that, that there's big money behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, even from the pharmaceutical side of things <laughs> and to really wake up really. Yeah. We have to wake up and see what's really going on and that our health really is in our hands. We have to be educated and understand that we have to step up and not be seduced mm -hmm. and manipulated into buying certain products that are not going to serve our body. Mm -hmm. This this body is, is the, the, the temple that houses the yeah. Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. if we are not healthy, whole, and complete, we cannot serve him to our fullest and our greatest ability. And and it's, 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 it's love the Lord with all your, all your might and then love your neighbor as yourself. And how can you even love your neighbor if you can't love yourself? Uh, we have to love ourselves healthy and well so that we can love others healthy and well as well. Mm, man, that's true. Because when you're empty, you have nothing to give. If you're just right. constantly trying to deal with your own health issues, there's nothing to give to your community or your family, really, for that matter. Now, no. we've, and I just want to say that, that I have noticed, too, that you have, uh, so many wonderful pieces of advice for even young moms who are preparing snacks and and in how to make those fun but healthy so that children feel like it's a special treat and I know I can even testify to my own daughter having given her babies vegetables and salad and you know I see these kids that oh our parents that say well they won't eat it and I think 
Well, mine sure did because they were given those things at an early age. They were introduced as just a fun treat and they love it. And they, to this day, they do. So I can testify to that uh, most certainly. But let's talk about women who are, say, more in my age, um, you know, passing over into the latter season of their life and they're dealing with those. And my age too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that. You're, you're so young and beautiful still to me. But, you know, <sighs> dealing with those hormonal imbalances, um, emotional imbalances and stress that has piled up and piled up to where they feel overwhelmed. They're tired, they're exhausted, and they just don't know how to even imp- uh, even put movement back into their lifestyle. Um, talk to us about where women are and, and how you'd like to help them. Yeah. So as a natural path, I'm really all about the holistic approach. So it's not just the food that we fuel our body. That's one piece of the puzzle, but it is also the movement. It's also how do we de-stress? How do we sleep better? How do we really learn how to have healthier relationships? Everything just spills over into the next area of our life. And so um, it's not a, a, a one answer solution. Okay. It's kind of like you've got to um, really master this in all area, but not to overwhelm you. It's, it's doing that one simple thing in each area to help you get closer to your goal of being a better individual. And that might mean, uh, for instance, um, regarding food, maybe it's putting a plant on every plate, you know, you're just adding in some green, you know, and getting rid of the foods that are, are dead, which are brown, uh, white kind of foods that you see, yeah. but more life-giving <laughs> foods that are going to give you the phytonutrients and phytochemicals that your body deserves. And when you're fueling your body with the right vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, then you're going to not have cravings. You're going to help better balance your hormones. You're going to end up sleeping better, have more energy. Like that's all going to play a big factor, but also moving. What if it's something just like taking a walk? It doesn't have to be, you know, get your Richard Simmons on, right? Like (laughs) it doesn't have to be some workout like that. It just, it could be simply just taking a walk, just Mm -hmm. movement because sedentary lifestyles Mm -hmm. are a major cause of chronic illness and people don't realize that. And they may say, well, I work out. Well, that workout was only 30 minutes to an hour, but the rest of the time, eight, nine, 10 hours a day, you're sitting. That is devastating. Yeah, that's the average. People are are sitting Mm. an average of eight to nine hours a day. Mm. And that's probably more, if you want to be honest. Once, you know, you have your... uh, hours of working and then you come home and plop on the television and watch uh, your favorite TV show, right? So it's it's being aware and being intentional to just move your body Mm. Um, regarding sleep. That's a big, big, um, you know, thing as far as getting that under, uh, under, uh, under wraps so that you can have that balance because that will help balance out your hormones. If you're not getting good quality sleep, your hormones will continually to be imbalanced. Mm. So how do you do that? You start to lower your lights a little bit at night, start to dim those lights so that it starts to, uh, you know, get that circadian rhythm back Naturally. on track. Mm-hmm. Stop, stop the blue lights with the screens from the television to the, to your cell phone, right? That we always have right there yeah. next to us. Um, so you have to start just doing intentional things that will allow your body to get into a, a, a rested state and not, um, um, you know, increase the, the parasympathetic nervous system. We oh, really yeah. want to balance that out and calm it down. We're always kind of, um, you know, jacked up, you know, with our adrenaline and things going 100 miles an hour. And what we're watching on TV is getting us um, our parasympathetic nervous system all um, hyped Mm. up when we want to calm, we want Mm. to be calm. And so obviously getting into God's word, Mm. prayer, meditation, it just all goes hand in hand. And Mm. it's not just a one and done. It's a daily practice, daily practice. As you're talking, I, I really sense even just the spiritual impact that this has because you're addressing Mm -hmm. the whole person, not just parts of a person and how, you know, our, our emotions and our, our spiritual well-being affects our physical well-being. Um, and, and I'm just thinking about how we're, we're encouraged in the scriptures to live, you know, the life of, of celebrating the Sabbath and coming into a place of rest. And I think that, that, 
oftentimes it's kind of a misnomer for people. They just don't understand what, is rest, what does rest look like? What would that look like for me? And you know, how do I achieve that? Because we really live in a culture that just has driven us to um, complete breakdown. And it's, it's, it's a little scary if you ask me. I know I have to deal with a, a crazy schedule so much of the time and I have to remind myself to stop and to schedule in what my body, what my soul, what my spirit, what I need, and uh, I can't give out to anyone what I have not filled up in this cup. So what are the pitfalls that you find people um, <clears throat> default to when they're dealing with rest or diet or movement or any of these things? What are some of the most common pitfalls for people? Well, I, I mean, really, all of it continually snowballs into um, just I mean, overwhelm, right? People experience that overwhelm and that stress. And, and stress is a big one. We have to realize how to de-stress. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the, the pitfalls is that it, it's, it causes a ripple effect. So it doesn't just affect us as an individual. It wow. affects our family, mm -hmm. our mood, and how we are, 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 are just maybe lashing out at our family that mm -hmm. they don't deserve it, right? Just because we are tapped out. Yeah. We're maxed out. And we're afraid. Our, our, um, you know, our, we're, just, we're just afraid. We're, we're just taking in too much and we have to just say stop we have to be intentional about turning off the computer turning off the tv and just saying still mm. quiet bringing in that that intentional time to reflect and get renewed and restored because just like you said we cannot give out of an empty vessel right so that is the biggest pitfall i believe is that we aren't being intentional of having healthy boundaries and shutting things down because we are in a world right now that there is so much information just thrown at us mm -hmm. all the time that if we don't shut it off it will continually come at us and um, that's the only way to shut it down is to be in control and and do it yourself. Mm. Do you think double-mindedness, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, plays a role where people maybe have not been able to deal with those emotions or those traumas or unforgiveness? Is that is that an issue? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, I think sometimes people don't really realize, too, that they're dealing with the issue, issue until the trigger uh, comes about in their life and they're like, Ooh, I, I thought I dealt with that, but then it comes back up. And then, so it's, it's, um, yeah, it, it can be just an issue, double mindedness for sure. I was going to read, um, actually, um, this is, I had it right here. <laughs> um, Proverbs sixteen twenty four, and it says, be not wise in your own eyes, mm -hmm. fear the Lord. And I really want to talk about that Good. fearing the Lord right? Mm -hmm. We are in a, a, a time right now where I don't see a lot of fearing of the Lord. And so we need to fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So turning away from sin, turning away from where we're missing the mark, it is healing to our flesh and it's refreshment to our bones. Mm -hmm. So when we are turning away from the very thing that is, is obviously destroying us, then it will be healing. And God restores, and He and He will redeem um, even the time that maybe we wasted in not taking good care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, giving yourself grace through the process of of putting those intentional boundaries in your life, He will restore the time, and He will yeah. He will heal you, and you will feel the refreshing, um, just um, mm. just kind of honey. The way the way His words are like honey. Mm right? Yeah. They just ooze and, and, and soothe every little inch of our bodies uh, and our minds and our souls. And so giving, that, giving him the, the time and energy that he deserves will give us the rest that we deserve. Yeah, I'm so glad that you brought that out uh, as you read that proverb, because I don't think that people really um, understand that what we're talking about is our our sinful nature and how that wants mm -hmm. to, you know, keep us bound up. And then, you know, when you add to that, that the fact that if you're a believer, you've got opposition in your life that wants to keep you bound by a stronghold. And so right. if we're, you know, you're not talking about shaming a person, but to be able to understand that these things that, you know, I'm not sinning in, in the terms of, 
uh, you know, everything's allowable, but is this beneficial to me and to my temple? Uh, and am I living optimally, uh, optimally the way God would have me to live? So, you know, am I able to fulfill my purpose if I'm constantly struggling with inflammation, uh, right. f you know, brain fog, dealing with uh, low energy, and that all the things that would keep me marginalized. Um, yeah. So we're talking about culprits that sneak in and we may not recognize them, but then once we do, and, and to the point that I was making earlier, I think oftentimes people have good intentions. They may start on a journey and then there's that you know, weak moment that sabotages them. I can say that even for myself, you know, I travel and that makes it very difficult when you're traveling and you're having to eat on the road. And, and I know that sounds like a big excuse and, and I'm not making an excuse. I'm just saying, I understand where people are and the stress they're living sure. under. But I also want to acknowledge that this is important and it's, it's, a, it's a huge um, issue that I'm also right now giving attention to because I realize that you know the enemy does, he wants me sick and God wants me well. So yes. where am I going to give my attention to? And, you know, I think that let's talk about how social structures can also be a part of that sabotage. Don't people struggle when socially they can't get other people on board with understanding what they're dealing with and the decisions and choices they're making? Because food and drink is always the center of our social, uh, social structures, yeah. I guess. Yeah, no, definitely. And a lot of times um, you don't even, people don't even realize that, uh, I mean, it's not their fault in some situations, like they're literally addicted. They're literally yeah. addicted to foods that are causing inflammation in their body right. and they don't realize it, but they're, they're, um, they're getting a dump, a brain dump of dopamine and serotonin. And those are those feel good hormones. And so wow. you're continually drawn to that kind of food. And that's the same thing with emotions as well, just so you know, but regarding socially, um, yeah, it's tough just because of uh, even just peer pressure or you put, you know, let's talk about family traditions. You know, if, if uh, there's a lot of food around family yeah. traditions and if you're not partaking, then all of a sudden people are looking at you and saying, well, what's your problem? And why yeah. aren't you, you know, eating Aunt Susie's whatever right. that he, she makes every every <laughs> year? Macaroni. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Why aren't you eating that? And so then they they make mm. it look like you're the outcast and right. nobody wants to feel right. rejected. And I think that's the bigger thing is people do not, they want to be included. Mm -hmm. And so um, that, that is a big issue. But when we are, um, when we understand that our health is our true wealth and we step into that space knowing that, okay, they may try to reject me, but that's really just um, um, more about them, not me. Mm -hmm. And go into it with a loving, kind heart mm -hmm. and just let them know where you're at and why yeah. you want to take care of yourself yeah. um, and give them grace to the process. Mm -hmm. And you too, it allows you to show up differently in those spaces. Mm -hmm. And also when you're intentional in those social settings, like you bring your own food, um, yeah. people will ask you questions. Absolutely. But guess what? It may actually give someone else hope and, and encourage them and give them that courage to step up into their healthiest, mm -hmm. best self when you do. So that creates a ripple effect as well. So I do think social settings are, are big, um, but we can overcome that. And when we teach people how we um, desire to be treated and how we um, are going to be showing up every time, just keep letting them know, like my parents know when I visit that I'm going to be drinking almond milk instead of their <laughs> milk or whatever. Yeah. They know this. They uh -huh. still give me a hard time after all these years, but it's okay. Mm. I just love them anyway. And guess what? You know, they have changed a few mm. of their habits because of watching me. I don't say a word, mm. but more is caught than taught, not just to our children, but even our parents. Mm -hmm. So um, same with your, with your social circle whenever you're out with friends. So mm -hmm. how are you showing up and how do you um, want to leave your social setting? Do you want to just kind of go with everybody else or do you want to rise up and, and, and really be that healthier uh, version of yourself and mm -hmm. let others be encouraged and inspired by that? Yeah. That's what I would, I would say. That's a good point. And, and I really want our viewers to, to recognize today that, you know, so much of this, they may have made uh, it seem insurmountable. It's just too much for me to try to handle. And, and I want to encourage people to reach out to you because you really do offer 
a, a support, an emotional support. You offer the, the advice to be able to know how to handle some of those situations. And uh, what we're talking about is really empowering the individual to walk in right. that divine health, the divine purpose, and to be able to graciously say to someone else without all the issues, without the defensiveness, you know, I'm doing this because. And I think you're right. It, it is, uh, there's more uh, learned that from being caught, not taught. Is that how you said that? Uh, and I, that's really powerful and, and good for us all to remember as we walk in this, um, this information. So let's talk about some of your success stories. I want to hear about, you know, somebody that's really struggled, really just had everything against them. And how did you help them out? Well, you know, I've got several stories I can <laughs> I share, but I just think, um, gosh, I'm going to go with, with, I've got a couple here, but I, I, I want to share more of an emotional one. Uh -huh. um, I, I, t I talk about Sheila often and, and Sheila reached out to me. It was, um, she lives in Minnesota where I do. And so it gets really cold in the winter and dark early, really, really, I mean, everywhere, but really dark here uh, during the winter time. And she was a um, young mom, had two two little kids and she was in her pajamas for almost, you know, it was like two and a half weeks and she was depressed and didn't know how to get out of that state. And she called me just crying. And, and I said, Sheila, I said, are you willing to do something for me? It may seem a little weird, but, um, she's like, I'll do anything. And I said, I want you to put on your, your winter boots right over your pajamas. I want you to put on your coat and your scarf and your hat and your gloves. And I want you just to go for a walk just around the block. And then I want you to call me when you get back. And she said, that is crazy because it was probably about, I think it was <laughs> minus 10 degrees. It was oh. cold, right? It was, it was first of January. Yeah. And she's like, okay. So she called me back after she went for that walk and she was crying with joy and giggling and couldn't believe how the depression had been lifted. Mm. She was literally in her pajamas for two and a half weeks, couldn't cook for her children, couldn't be the wife to her, her husband that she wanted to be, couldn't function, couldn't go to work. She was paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we need somebody yeah. that believes in us and pushes us mm. into a place that isn't so comfortable so that we can break free of, of the stronghold that might be attacking us and and it might yeah. be just that simple going mm. for a walk around the block because that that release that positive endorphins right those right. happy hormones yeah. and she started to feel good and she she was like oh my goodness I can do this mm -hmm. so it's those little things that make a big difference but it's having people in your in your corner that believe in you and and will hold you accountable uh through the process and love you love you mm. through it I had another gal that um was really at a plateau in her weight release. And I, and I say release because it's about releasing unhealthy weight, but you have to release the unhealthy emotions That's attached good. to that weight. Um, but she was in this plateau and, and I said, well, let, let's talk about where you're at and, and what's going on emotionally. And so we talked through it and we found out that she was really hanging on to an unforgiving uh, place of, of, about something that had been done to her in the past. And so we didn't exercise. It was just a, a, a writing exercise mm -hmm. where she was able to write out uh, to this person and, and tell them how much that she ended up you know, forgiving them. And I'm, and, you know, I'm sorry that I put myself in this place, blah, blah, blah. Just, she did the exercise and then burned the paper, but she released five pounds that week. She was at a plate plateau for three weeks, didn't release not one pound. And then in that one week, five pounds gone. So there is something to be said about hanging on to those emotional, uh, unhealthy emotions that mm -hmm. keeps that inflammation in your body, right? Yeah. We don't realize it, but it's so true. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. yeah. Those are small and, stories, but any, I mean, they've got major weight release oh, stories, yeah. but those are powerful. Well, what about autoimmune? Anybody that uh, has dealt, uh, this yes. is so common now. That's why I'm asking uh, any yeah. success stories there. Oh my goodness. So many from fibromyalgia to uh, rheumatoid arthritis to recently there was um, a gal Tara and recently she dealt with endometriosis. I, actually, I see re recently she dealt with it for 12 mm. years and the doctor said she would never have children and she was in a lot of pain, debilitating pain. She would end up going to bed like at 6 p.m. at night. Her and her husband weren't having the best relations because, well, you know, she was in pain mm. and she was, a, um, you know, 
elementary school teacher didn't have enough energy to do her job. Well, um, after working with me and doing Visibly Fit, after three weeks, she was no longer in pain. And I can say now that her little baby girl, Melody, is is almost a year old. And so I'm telling you that God will restore wow. your body and he will redeem the time. But it's it's fascinating how our bodies really are wired to be healthy, right? Mm-hmm. We just have to write, have the right tools and the right know-how and the right accountability to get there. But um, it's mm-hmm. just a beautiful miracle story. So good. So good. You know, there's, yeah. I could ask you a million more questions and uh, I think you're amazing. Uh, what we're talking about is really addressing the root issues of underlying health issues so that we are successful in the long term and we feel good and we're reaching our fullest potential, not just with a focus on weight loss. And that's, I think, what sets you apart. You know, Wendy, in the next 30 seconds, I'd love for you to just encourage that person that's watching today who is really, um, they've stumbled upon this program, maybe for the first time, and they've really been discouraged. They're dealing with health issues. They're dealing with um, tremendous amount of stress address some of these things just from from the um, point of view of health and wellness so that they can actually become what they're intended to be. Would you encourage that person today? Absolutely. I would first like to tell you that you are not too far gone. It's not too late. You're not too old. Um, God cares about you and he cares about the details of your life and he wants you healthy and well and you deserve to be healthy and well and you're worthy of taking care of yourself. So your health is your true wealth. And if you have struggled for a long time, don't keep staying in that place of, of, of thinking, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. No, you are an overcomer and you can do, you can do this. You can get into the best health of your life. Even at this stage, if you're in a more uh, mature years of your life, you can still get into your best health by taking small, simple steps and be encouraged and have accountability. So take that step today. And whether it's with me or somebody else, just do it because you are worthy. And guess what? Our creator is really worthy. Amen. And how can we find you, Wendy? You can go to wendypet.com, and that's W-E-N-D-I-E-P-E-T-T.com. And I also have a free green drink recipe that will help get rid of inflammation inflammation in your body at liveimmune.com. And I'll give that to you there. Wonderful. Thank you for being with me. I hope we can do it again. Me too. Thank you so much, Brenda. Awesome. And friends, I want to thank you for being with us. I know that you were encouraged and that you found some inspiration by listening to Wendy today. Go visit her site and you take care of you because you matter. We'll see you again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch. <laughs>